At 2 o'clock in the morning, do you stop at a red light? Yeah. Is there a cop there? Well, sometimes I don't. Well, <laughs> I do. I do. Bo and most of us do. Most of us do. Right. Um, but that's voluntary compliance. That was a complete perversion of logic. Traffic laws state that it is mandatory to stop at a red light. The IRS code says it's voluntary to comply. Mandatory and voluntary are the complete opposite of each other. Yet he wants us to believe that they mean the same thing. So can the government criminally prosecute somebody of information put on their 1040? Yes. Right, so doesn't that violate the Fifth Amendment? No. Uh, but the Fifth Amendment says I, I, I don't have to do anything that incriminates myself. Well, it doesn't incriminate you to put, to put but, your income down. But you said before I could be put in jail for it. The commissioner wants us to believe that although the IRS demands that you fill out the 1040 and you can go to jail for it, that they are not violating your Fifth Amendment rights of self-incrimination. That is absurd. Isn't it true that the word income is not defined anywhere in the Internal Revenue Code? The law says that the, the government has a right to tax income from any source derived. So, but the word income is not defined in the code. It just says income without a definition That's right. of what income is. That's right. Correct? Yeah. But there are many different kinds of taxes. Well, how can an American citizen know what income is if the code doesn't define it? If they're paying an income because tax... Because the courts have all defined it. Do you remember what constitutional attorney Edwin Vieira said? The definition of income in the Constitution was given in the Eisner versus McCumber case. And it turns on gains or profits that are made from some activity. So the Supreme Court has ruled Income is not wages, it's not labor, it's gain from corporate activity. I believe that a man's labor is his private property. That's your view, but it's not the law. The Supreme Court's even said your labor is your private property. When I go to work for somebody, it's a trade, it's an even exchange. I do some work, you give me some money. In 1916, we had the Bruce Haber case and the Stanton case. And the Bruce Haber case and the Stanton case said that the 16th Amendment gave the government no new taxing power. I, I'm not going to argue the niceties of that with you. And it came up again in a case called Peck versus Lowe, where, where the Supreme Court said the 16th Amendment did not extend Congress's taxing power to any new or accepted subjects. In other words, if you weren't taxable before the 16th, you weren't taxable after the 16th. Today I interviewed a juror, okay, who sat on a case, and uh, they found the person not guilty for lack of filing, okay? And I asked her why they found him not guilty. And she said because the IRS couldn't show us the law that made him liable to file a 1040. All they need to do, if there is a law, is to show us the law which of course they never did. And the reason they didn't do it was why? Because there is no law. Title 26 requires you to file a return. But doesn't Title 26 have to be in compliance with the Supreme Court decisions? You're going to take a 1920 case and superimpose it on the whole Internal Revenue Code that was written after it? No, that's not... I can't believe what I just heard. Rewind. <laughs> You're going to take a 1920 case and superimpose it on the whole Internal Revenue Code that was written after it? No, that's not... Remember he said earlier the Internal Revenue Code was authorized by the 16th Amendment? The Internal Revenue Code is authorized by the 16th Amendment. Remember, the Supreme Court said the 16th Amendment did not give the government any new taxing power. These decisions have never been overturned. Let's listen further. Can the lower courts overrule the Supreme Court? No. How are they putting people in jail today for not paying a tax on their labor when the Supreme Court said they don't have to? Doesn't the IRS code have to be in compliance with the Supreme Court? That's my Aaron, big question. This is a waste of time. Well, let me because just... whatever I say, you're not going to believe. He's right. I don't believe him. And neither should you. He wants us to believe we should obey the IRS code, 
which is being enforced in violation of the many Supreme Court decisions. If no, the no, Supreme no, no, Court no. made a decision. Thank you, thank you, Aaron. I think we're finished. I'm sorry, Mr. Cohen, you're doing that. Well, I'm sorry that you, you constantly re-argue the point. You're liable because the law says that you're liable, but and the courts say the law says you're liable, and that's why you're liable. You see, he's talking about the lower courts, who are not in compliance with the Supreme Court, as they have to be. Doesn't the court have to be in compliance with the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court has so held. Where? You caught me unprepared. I'll come back to that. Well, I don't want to do that. But let me ask you a hypothetical question. No. You're making uh, silly arguments here. Why is the Supreme Court decision a silly argument? Be well, because it's inapplicable. That made my heart stop. He just said Supreme Court decisions do not apply to the IRS. That's the behavior you would expect from a totalitarian country, maybe China or Russia or Cuba. Not from America. They're just making up the law as they go along. Now I knew the tax honesty movement was right. The IRS thrives on intimidation and fear, not by law. It's no different than a criminal protection racket using force to extract your money from you. Then the former IRS commissioner, now working at a prestigious Washington law firm, threatens me. Watch. Aaron, you understand Yiddish, Cornish to Helfen. For those of you who don't understand Yiddish, that means nothing will help you. Now it all became clear. I understood why the IRS wouldn't go on camera and talk about where the law was. I understood why all the senators I called refused to be interviewed. There is no law. And now you know what our political leaders and the courts have known for decades and have tried to cover up. The United States Constitution strictly forbids a direct, unapportioned tax on the wages and salaries of American citizens. The United States Supreme Court has consistently ruled that the income tax is a tax on profits and gains, not on labor and wages. On behalf of the American people, I challenge the IRS to show me a statute that allows a direct, unapportioned tax on the wages and labor of the American people. And if I'm wrong, I will give my most humble apologies to the IRS. If the IRS is wrong, and there is no law, then every person who's been jailed should be let out of jail immediately, and any assets seized should be returned to their rightful owners. If this is a nation of laws, and a free country, then the IRS should show the law to the American people. I felt an overwhelming need to understand why juries were finding innocent people guilty of not filing a tax return when there was no law requiring them to do so. So I went to talk to Marcy Brooks, a juror who used her common sense and did not allow the judge to railroad the jury into a guilty verdict. He was being tried for four counts of not filing his income tax. Okay. And our question was, well, what is to decide? Either he did or he didn't. It never occurred to us that he might actually be innocent while at the same time not filing. In the federal government, it is not a felony not to file taxes. Finally, they said, okay, if we're going to get this guy, we're going to have to put it in the state. They called up the IRS agent. Agent Craner. Craner. Craner? Yeah. Robert Craner. Mm -hmm. This is Ken Doherty. He's also an investigator with the Illinois Department of Revenue. Yeah. This is a request for a copy of the delegation and authority order. Right. And I talked to my boss about that, and he said that my badge is that. Badge is the authority. Hmm. And I thought it had to be in writing. The last question that the defense asked him was, did you write any of this down? And Agent Craner looked right at him and right at us, and he said, I never wrote anything down. And yet when we saw the video, there he was, writing notes, you know. And so I, I'm thinking, okay, at this point, the judge is supposed to say, Agent Craner, it is clear that you have committed perjury. It, it wasn't even noticed. It finally came to the climax. 
Mr. Harrell looked right at the prosecutor and he said, I will tell you the same thing I have told over and over again to government officials. You show me the law that requires me to file a tax return and I'll be glad to do it. And again I ask, under what is the requirement that you claim and require to do these things? Well, Hannah, the requirement under the regulations is what section? My question to you is, what particular act are we discussing here that I am liable to do these things if you claim I'm liable to do? Your exact question would be again? Okay, what is the section that what? But I guess I'm still not understanding your question, Mr. Harrell. 